now, here's your host on You Bet, Bruce Forsyth. Thank you, thank you. Oh, you, you have cheered me up. You really have, you know. No, you, you cheered me up because I was in the dressing room just before the show and uh, I preened myself, you know, just preening myself. I love a preen. And uh, <laughs> especially if there's a long mirror to preen in, you know. Anyway, <laughs> I was preening away and this woman rushed into my room and she said, oh, Mr Forsyth, she said, my little boy did such a perfect impression of you this morning. It was wonderful. I said, well, that's lovely. I said, I'm, I'm so thrilled. I said, I said, what did you say to him? She said, I told him to stop acting like an idiot. <laughs> Can you imagine how I felt? You know, all that preening for nothing. But nevertheless, you'll soon be meeting my three guests. Now, each guest in turn will introduce an item of great skill and they will bet on it. My other two guests are going to bet on it. A hundred people in our audience will bet on it and don't forget to have your bet at home. In fact, if you've had any funny bets, do tell us about them. We'd love to know you've had a funny bet. Now, getting back to you, hundred people, you have a very important task because you're betting for charity. The more bets you get right, the more money will go to a very worthy cause. And to enable you to bet, you each have a Brucey button. Have you found your Brucey button? Yes! Yeah! Good. Yeah! And now it's time to meet my three guests, and here they are. Bob Holness, <laughs> Susie Cutlow, and John McCreary. There they are. Whoa! Hello, hello. How are you, Bob? All right. How are you, Susie? Hello, John. How are you? And hello, my darling. Are you OK? Fine, thank you. Now, you each have a little tease, first of all. Oh, uh, yes, get in line, will you, please? <laughs> you, no, you must get in line. Fine. It's only fair. Only fair. Right, so what, what is your little clue? It's a little packet of plasters. A packet of plasters? Yes. That's a little clue Sticky there. plasters. It's sticky yes. plasters. Yes. The next thing I've is... I've got some Japanese ballet slippers. I don't know what that's supposed to be. <laughs> It should have been a bag of flour. Sorry about that, darling. Sorry about that, but it should have been a bag of flour. But never mind. I don't know what went wrong there. OK, then we have... Well, you can bet there's no flies on me. No, there's no... There never is, John. There never is. No flies. They're fishing flies. Now, what have you been up to this week, my darling? Well, Bruce, this week I've been given a new role. I'm a new the, role? Yep. Yeah, I'm the Lady of the Lakes. The Lady of the Lakes. Mm. Well, we'll see all about that with your <laughs> film crew later on. So if you'll just take uh, John and Susie back to home base, leave Bob with me. Right. And we're all right. Now, right. Blockbusters has turned into a blockbuster, hasn't it? Well, it has, hasn't it? Has, hasn't it? One way into that. Yes. How many have you done? Well, at the end of this series, yes. which is uh, very shortly, 650 we will have done. 650. And another 120 coming up this Another year. 120. And how yeah. many years does that mean you've Seven done? years. Seven, Seven years. years. Yes. Absolutely incredible. You can see the lines, Bruce. I know I can Well, have me. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have It's mutual. It's mutual. <laughs> now, um, mm. you have a, a clue. It was the plasters, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. OK, well, tell us a little bit more about that. I'll tell you a little bit about it, oh, OK? okay. okay. Uh, two gentlemen are concerned with it. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they would appear to be Kentish men because they come from Gillingham. Mm. But in fact, they were born in London. Yes. So they're good, true cockneys. Uh -huh. Now, they're demon barbers and they operate in Gillingham, right? Mm -hmm. Now, they've been working together for about 20 years. So they know, it, know each other fairly well, Bruce. Yes. And they would have to for this particular challenge. What you are know? they going to do then? Well, let me tell you. Uh -huh. Their names, first of all, Jerry Harley and Tom Rodden. Uh -huh. OK. And Jerry and Tom say they can lather and shave each other, in turn, blindfold, using cutthroat razors. And <laughs> <laughs> In three minutes. Right, in three in minutes. In three minutes. All right. Now, Sue, you've been listening to all that? Two yeah. barbers going to lather and shave each other in three minutes. Are you sure they're friends? <laughs> we'll, we'll soon find <laughs> out. We're Susie, we will find out later. <laughs> um, yeah. Ooh, uh, I have faith. You have faith? You can pressure no. yes. Now, John, well, deep I, in thought there. Well, I don't shave very much, Bruce. No, we can see that. They'd love to get hold of you, I'll, wouldn't they? I'll say no, they won't do it. No. OK, no. He right. doesn't even know what a cutthroat razor is. He's never seen a cutthroat razor. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, audience, are you ready out there? If you think the barbers can do it, make your bet. And do have a bet at home. Have a bit of fun. Have a bet with Grandma or Granddad or Mum and Dad or your sister and brother. That's it. Yes, 80 say they will, and only no 20. 20? No, is that not bad, certainly. Is now, another part of the fun of uh, You Bet Bob is the forfeits, or are the forfeits. So, right. if it should go wrong for you, what are you prepared to do as a forfeit? Well, I hate to mention this, actually, Bruce. Arachnophobia. Have you heard of arachnophobia? No, I don't know what's that. It's a morbid fear, a petrifying fear of spiders. 
Oh, well, a lot, lot of people have it. I've had it for a long time. Yeah. A lot of people yeah, have A lot of people have associated with it. Yes, me included. Yes. Now, I lived in Africa for 10 years, so I've partially got over it, but it's still there, this mm -hmm. lingering fear. I can cope with the little ones that come yeah. in the bath. So what are you prepared to do with this? Well, spider? I'm prepared, if anybody has got a big, hairy spider, to sort of... Yes. ..handle it. Handle it. <laughs> so he's already crying. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we believe you. I've got all goosebumps. Yeah, I know. He's, you're shaking. I know. Oh, all right. OK, Bob, if you can make it back to home base, okay. don't think about it too much. Right. That is your forfeit if it comes to it. Right. Well, now let's meet the two demon barbers we've been talking about, Jerry Harley and Tom Rodden. There we are. Who? Who's Jerry? I'm Jerry. You're Jerry and Tom. Tom, 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 yeah. Tom, and, Tom and Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't you start playing cat and mouse with me, all right? <laughs> now, you, I believe, Jerry, you have a, a record with the cutthroat razor in the Guinness Book of Records, is that right? That's right, Bruce. Yes. How many have you shaved in what time? What I is think, your record? I think it's 237 in the hour, the, 200, last, the last count. 237 in an hour yes. with a cutthroat razor. Yes. My goodness. How about the tips? Did you get good tips? <laughs> <laughs> I say. Now, we were going to let you... The challenge was going to be to shave my chin, but they did say it'd take... <laughs> they did say it'd take too long, and by the time they put the scaffolding up, it would be too long. <laughs> but anyway, this was your idea, the pair of you. You came up with this idea to, to be with us tonight, and this is marvellous, because the more ideas we get for our show, well, it, it gives us a show. So we thank you very much for coming up with this idea. I'm going to get round the back here, and you sort out who's going to go first. And you're going to lather yeah, up in a moment, but don't first. start doing anything until I tell you. OK? Now, you've got three minutes, so put the towel round. That's good. So if we're ready, put the blindfold on, Jerry. Because it's your turn to have the blindfold on. That's it. And get yourself all set. Now, you've got three minutes, both of you. Wait, wait a minute. What's the matter? I just got to find his nose. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you find his nose. Yeah, but don't forget his ears, either. <laughs> Here we go. Three minutes, starting from now. Away you go. Okay, you've got two minutes Good. left. Just over two minutes. So change over. Oh. Get your towel around you. And this is where you take over. All right, Tom. Jerry's more or less ready there. Get the you feel for the lather, can you? You, you, you? That's it. Your razor's there. Okay, you've got a minute forty-five left. You really have. You've got to be so exact at this. You don't want to do his eye as well, are you? <laughs> OK. A minute 20 seconds left. A minute 20. <laughs> He's doing OK. How long have we got left? He's got a minute left now. I'll keep you posted all the way along so you can do a good job there. Remember the spiders, you say. 45 seconds left. Can't find your chin. <laughs> Can't find his chin. Stick your chin out, Jerry. I didn't get off me. 30 seconds left. Finish off. Both sides. Both sides. So I've got to do it properly. Oh, yeah! Come here. 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 Come here.
you. Oh, 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 oh absolutely, down here, down here. Well absolutely, absolutely marvellous. Wasn't it? Absolutely well done, incredible. Well we must try that next week. Well right. done. <laughs> that was absolutely... He is. He is shaking like you're shaking more than you were about the spiders. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 well, that's Tom and Jerry, it was a fascinating thing to watch. Everybody here was absolutely biting their nails. We thank you so much. A well-earned Betsy. Oh, well, there they go. Off you go. Marvellous. <laughs> what about it? He really was a bit like this. Well, I think he's shaking like a leaf. How did we score on that? Yes, well, we all did pretty well. Yes, well, you said yes, and it was yes, so 80 points for you, Bob, and no forfeit, no spiders. Oh, Marvelous. That's a relief. Susie, you had faith as, faith as well, so you get 80 points, but unfortunately, John said no, so you get nothing. Close shave, Bruce. A close shave? It was a close shave. <laughs> it was a close shave. <laughs> now, 80 of you out there, very well done indeed. Those 80 points will be converted into money later on in the show. So well done, you 80. Now, Melvin Hayes from last week had to do a forfeit, which was to be a magician's assistant. Now, we're not quite sure what the magician did to him, but let's have a little look. Ladies and gentlemen, watch closely, for the more you watch, the less you see, the less you see, the better I like it. Three handkerchiefs, the green one in there, and the red one in there, and the yellow one. Watch closely. One, two, three, <laughs> go. Oh, and there it is. Very good. The other no. oh, oh, right. <laughs> and, and now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present to you the world's greatest illusion, sawing a lady in half. But first, we need a lady. My assistant, Melvin, will pass among you to find a suitable victim, uh, a volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> is there any, any lady here that, please, will help Ali Bongo to be sawn? Madam, would you like to be sawn in half? Absolutely no. Oh, please. <laughs> you wouldn't mind. It, it, it's quite nice. I mean, nothing... Would you like to be sawn in half? Please. I mean, it's, you, you would like to be, wouldn't you? Yes. Yes, yes he's going to be doing it. <laughs> I failed again, Ali. Yes. Come back. Come here. I failed. You failed. You can't failed. get the help. Melvin, yes. you'll have to do it yourself. Me? Yes. I've I can't do it. I've seen you in a frock. But I'm a coward. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. I, I know what to do. Here we go. Watch the watch. Watch the watch. You are going to sleep. I'm going to sleep. You are under my power. I'm under his power. I <laughs> <laughs> can't ever believe this. Lay on the couch. I won't come to any harm, will I? No, no, no. It's perfectly safe. I'm terrified. Yes. Ah. Here we go. Ah. Now, the cloth. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. <laughs> here we go. Oh, There's sorry. There's blood on it. <laughs> that was last night. This will <laughs> Your jacket. Here we go. <laughs> yes. And some little bits of wood go in here. There's one in there, one in there, one in there, and one in there. That's to check the progress of the saw. Now, a deadly Black & Decker. <laughs> no, 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 no. Right, there we go. Uh, uh, you ready, Melvin? I'm ready. Ready? Here we go. <laughs> uh, 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 it's one. <laughs> 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 oh, that's magic. Is that is fantastic. Forget... That is fantastic. Round of applause, Robin. Oh, well done. Well done. Well done. What about that? Oh, oh dear. Oh, thank you. I um, I really did enjoy that. I really did. Um... <laughs> And thank you, Melvin. Well, now, that's the end of part one. In part two, we'll be meeting a boy who's going through the mill and has to make a snap decision, and a man who's way out of line and has a sinking feeling. We'll be back in a bit. You can bet on it. See you. Welcome back. Welcome back. Now... Whether it's pop music or musical shows, here's a lady that's at home with both. She's not at home at the moment, she's here. And let's see her, the very talented Susie Quattro. Yes. Hello, my love. Hello again. 
Jane. And thank you for being with us. My pleasure. It really is lovely. Now, what are you doing at uh, this uh, present moment? I'm on the show. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing apart from that? Um, I've got a new single coming out in March, which I'm actually oh, zipping up the old leather jumpsuit again. Oh, yes, you the know, old leather gear, yes. yes. We know you from you the like leather that, gear. Do oh, you? I love the leather gear, yes. Yes. <laughs> I polish mine every day. <laughs> <laughs> now then, yes, so, yes. so what's it called? Um, it's called Baby, You're a Star. Good. So good. that's the plug for that. Yes. And I got a musical that I've written with uh, Riddy Rushton. You've called... written it because you love doing Annie, didn't you? Oh. I, I, mean, I mean, I saw you many it's times fun. talking about it and yeah. speaking about it, but you love doing it. So now you've written one? Yes. With who? With Riddy Rushton. He did the book William and... Rushton? Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, and I did the music, and it's called Tallulah. Tallulah? Well, is it not about Tallulah Bank? Tallulah, yet? yes, darling. It, it is about yeah. Tallulah Bank. Oh, Margaret. You know, yeah. And you can do a bit of the voice, I, I can tell already. I certainly can. Yeah. Well, we wish you good luck with Thank your you. acting career. Now, your little clue was, um, it was that a clog, clog, but it yes. should have been a bag of flour, we think. But right. now, we'll explain that now. Okay. Off we go. This, this kid, he's the youngest challenger ever to appear on the show. His name is Neil Everett. He's eight years old. He's an expert on British windmills. He says... He can recognize 12 British windmills chosen by a member of the audience from a selection of 50 black and white photographs. And he will tell us the name of the windmills and when they were built. What about that? 12 mm. out of 50, the name of the windmill and mm -hmm. when they were built. Yeah. Well, now, that's a puzzler. What about you, John? What very, do you think? very close. My brain's flip-flopping between the favorites. I think I'll go 11 to 10 on each of two. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I want Susie to win. I'll go yes. Yes for Susie. <laughs> yes, well, we'll try and work that out later. <laughs> when we put the rewind button going. Right. Now then, Bob. I think I'm going to sail in the other direction. You are? Yes. All right. I think he's taken on more than Jew. I'm going to go no. You're going to go for a no. Right. All right. Thank you, Bob. Right. Now, what about there? What do you think about this eight-year-old? Are you on the side of this little chap? If you think you'll do it, make your bet. Keep your buttons down for at least three or four seconds. And do have a bet at home, especially you eight-year-olds. Have a bet with dad or grandma or grandpa. 63, say yes, and no's 37. Mm. Well, now, if it does go wrong, should by chance, uh, Neil lets you down. Yes. Well, what are you prepared to do? Well, Susie I'm, Quattro. <laughs> I'm not really prepared to do it, but it's something <laughs> I wouldn't like to do. You would like to? I wouldn't like to be a waitress. A waitress? Yes, because I would be, it would be, I would be hard pushed to be polite for too long. <laughs> <laughs> you would like to have to try to be nice to people, not for that long, especially no. at the table, and some people could be very awkward. Well, customers. I can spill food very easily. Oh, actually, I see, you see, so I'm you'd be a that. naughty waitress. Yes. <laughs> All right, well, if it comes to that, we know what you're prepared to do. Back to home right, base. Okay. Susie, there we are. <laughs> well, now. If you'll uh, bring on the pictures, the windmill pictures, while I get a member from our audience to pick out the 12. Thank you very much, Ellis. Thank you, my darling. Now, who should we have here tonight? La, 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 la. I think we'll have a chat for this. What about you, sir? Oh, All right, you. fine. Come along. Are you with anybody? Yes, you with a group? Sorry, yes. a, a group of people? No, just the four. Oh, just the four of you. Where are you all from? Watford. Uh, from Dun Watford, Dunstable. I think. And your name? Uh, Steve Tuckfield. Steve? Tuckfield. Tuckfield. OK, fine. Now, Steve, all you've got to do... What do you do, by the way? Uh, ductwork fitter. A what? Uh, air conditioning fitter. Air conditioning fitter. Right, we need some air tonight. Right. <laughs> now, then, all I want you to do is pick out 12 of these windmills and give them to me. Oh, but six from this side and six from that side. Be as varied as you want to be, OK? And off you go. What's Ken? What did you say? Steve. Steve, that's right. <laughs> Just give, me, give him to me one at a time. I knew I shouldn't have picked him. <laughs> That's it. Five. That's three. And four. That's it. Another two. Five. Well done. Six well done, Fred. It was Fred, wasn't it? That's right. That's right, Steve. <laughs> now six from here. Okay. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. 11, 12. Thank you, George. OK. OK. <laughs> so, we can't wait to get off. You're a star. All right, then. Clear them off. Right. Thank you very much, Steve. OK? Off you go. Well, now. We're all ready. So here's our eight-year-old wonder with the windmills. And they're all on his mind, we hope. Neil Everett. There we are.
How are you? All right. Good. And you're feeling fine? Yes. Good. Lovely. Now, you all must have a look at that lovely sweater, because that's a windmill, isn't it? Is that a windmill? Yes. It is a windmill. And who made that for you? Grandma. Your grandma, bless her heart. Does she make you lots of things? Yes. And does she so... give you lots of money? What? <laughs> Does she give you lots of money? No. No. <laughs> well, I think she will after that. Right. <laughs> now, tell me, where are you from? Boston in Lincolnshire. Boston in Lincolnshire. I see. Fine. And do you have any other hobbies apart from the windmills here? Steam trains. Steam trains. Oh, you love steam trains. Good. Have you got any? A train set. A train set. I see. And steam train. Fine. I see. Good. Now, have you got a girlfriend at the moment? No. <laughs> Nothing serious? No. Oh, good. You've got loads of time. Anyway, this was your own idea, this windmill uh, yes. challenge, wasn't it? Well, we thank you very much for thinking of it. And thank you. When did you first take up being interested in, in uh, windmills? Since birth. <laughs> Yes, well, I, I know I couldn't go back to there. <laughs> you need to think about that. Well, now, are you ready to take this on? Yes. Oh, good, and we all wish you all the luck in the world, OK? We all wish you all the luck in the world. So come over here and be sort of on that little angle there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go one, two, three, one, two, three. We're going to keep doing them in that order, top to bottom, OK? You quite ready? Yes. Good. All right, Neil, we all wish you good luck. We'll start with this top one. Stainton, Nottinghamshire. 187. Stainton, Nottinghamshire, 1807. Yes! Well, OK. The next one. Clay, Norfolk, 1713. Clay, Windmill, Norfolk, 1713. Well done. We're doing all right. Alford, Lincolnshire. What was that? Sorry, what was that? Alford, Lincolnshire, 1813. Alford, Lincolnshire, 1813. Yes! Come on. Good mother. The next line now. Thaxted, Essex, 1804. Thaxted, Essex, 1804. Wonderful. Ellis's Mill, Lincoln, 1798. Ellis Mill, Lincoln, 1798, it is. Good. Kibworth Harcourt, Leicestershire, 1711. Kibworth Harcourt, 1711. You're right again. Mark. This one? Stellin Minis, Kent, 1866. Stellin Minis, Kent, 1866. It is. Good. Trader Mill, Sibsey, Lincolnshire, 1877. Trader Mill, Sibsey, 1877 is correct again. Chesterton, Warwickshire, 1632. Chesterton, Warwickshire, 1632. It is. We're on the last, we're on the last line. It's all right, they're all watching you. Yeah. Yeah. Did you think the audience had gone? <laughs> they're still there. Come, we're all rooting for you. Just three Cranbrook, to go. Cranbrook, Kent, 1814. Cranbrook, Kent, 1814, yes. North Leverton, Nottinghamshire, 1813. North Leverton, Nottinghamshire, 1813. And the last one. Walton, Lincolnshire. 1880. Waltham, Nottinghamshire, you say? Lincolnshire. L sorry, sorry. <laughs> 1880, you're right. How about... Well, well. Oh, you couldn't wait to get your hands on that. How about... It? Well, I'd say... You're one of the cleverest little chaps I've ever seen in my life. You're absolutely marvellous and you've got a lovely manner about you. Never lose that manner because you're a super chap, I tell you that. OK, Ellis, see him off there. And thank you once again. Yeah. Really yeah. Incredible. Incredible. Well...
How about that, Susie? He did you proud, my dear, didn't he? He, he was brilliant. Wasn't and he? you get another 63 points, which puts you in the lead with 143. You said yes as well. Well done, John. You get 63. Windmills on his mind. Didn't Windmills you? on his mind. You're right. We did that joke earlier, but oh, never mind. <laughs> Good, you know. it's OK, yes. It's those yeah. earphones he's got on, you see. OK, but listening. you're at least off the mark and you said no, Bob, so you get nothing. Only to spur him on. Only That's to spur all. him Only on. To spur you want him, him to bet. Right. Anyway, Susie, you don't have to do a forfeit. That's lovely. And 63 out of you said yes. So another 63 points will be converted into money later on in the show. Well done, you 63. Well, now, here's a real character. Whether it's racing or snooker, he's always an odds-on favourite. Yes, it's John McCrerick. Hey! <laughs> now then. Not too bad, old fella, not too bad. Well, thanks for being here, first of all. Well, now, how did you learn this tic-tac in which well, you do...? I was a racecourse bookmaker. Oh, you were? Yes, and anyone who thinks it easy, Bruce, being oh. a racecourse bookmaker... Oh, no. ..you're watching this, they end up being on shows with you. Now, you can't be hum more humiliated than this, because I've got my hands here. <laughs> 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 so, it shows how much, so how this is all a is part of it, the, the, the gloves. I'll, I'll show you very quickly okay. how yep. the tic-tac goes. It's Good. how the bookmakers communicate with each other. Fine. Evens, 11 to 10, 6 to 5, 5 to 4, 11 to 8. Ear roll, 6 to 4, 30 to 8, 7 to 4, 50 to 8. Bottle, 2 to 1. Son of a head, 9 to 4 the hill, 9 to 4 the hill. 5 to 2, 11 to 4. Carpet, 3, Burlington, Bertie, 100 to 30, 7 to 2, 4, 9 to 2, 5, 5, 6, 7. Any fool can do it. It's absolutely easy. <laughs> and it's easy but... <laughs> what we're going to do, we're going to give Bruce tic-tac lessons, but he's a bit th simple, a bit thick. You know. <laughs> no, 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 you're not very bright. I was told behind there, not yeah, very bright. Fine, so yes, we do it very slowly and easily. Yes. Now, that's one. Top of the head, one. Go top of the head, top right of the head. Right hand, yeah, top, top of the head. Top of the head. Bottle two. Bottle two. Carpet three. Carpet three. Row four. Be a sign for you. No, like this, you fool. What's wrong with you? Five. Hand five. Five and one is six. F five and one is six. Five well, I could have told you seven. that. Five, 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 five. Wait a minute, what do you do? Mammy, mammy. 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 Then your clue, by the way. Yes. What was your clue? Well, it was um, some flies. No flies on me. Oh, you remember fly... that witty joke, Bruce? Uh, yes, too good fly... for you, old Jack. It was too no flies on me. me. Right. You are too quick for me. Right. <laughs> right. But will you tell us all about your challenge? Well, it is a, okay. a very interesting challenge. Do you challenge. know, I, I wish at this moment that hair had grown right over your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Here we go. I'll tell you about Richard Whitehead. Now, he's a keen fisherman. You know what these fishermen are like. And his speciality is carp fishing. And they congregate, as you know, they carp do. a long, long way they away, do. those yeah. of you who go fishing. Yeah. And Richard has had to develop an accurate and long cast. Now, he says that he can cast a two-ounce, two-ounce lead weight into a target four feet in diameter lying on the surface of a freshwater lake a hundred yards from the shore. So it's two, two ounce lead weight. Two ounce lead weight. Four, four feet of diameter. The target is aiming for a hundred yards away. And I'll tell you this, Bruce, yes. I think this, in my own view, is an absolute laid on certainty. Because whenever you have the challengers and they've actually do it normally, this is a what they call a lay down. So I bet ten to one on he'll do it. Ten, ten to yes one is a on certainty. He is certainty. a certainty because he's used to doing it. Yes, yeah, fine. Fine, man, must do it. Yes, yeah, fine. So I'm certain. Don't you touch the We'll run out of tape. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's see what anybody else has a thought on this. Bob, oh, dear, you're it's all right for you laughing back there. I'm going to try and control him. If he's if he's if he's got enough confidence to actually make a bet like that, I reckon it's ten to one off. Yeah. <laughs> Well done. Okay. Can you say yes? Yeah. Susie, what do you say, my darling? Well, I think it's a fishy story. Yes? <laughs> no. No. All right, Susie, you've said no, and that's fine. Now, out of there, the audience, are you going to go along with our tipster? <laughs> or what are you going to do? Make your bet. Make your bet. Hold the button down for at least three or four seconds and do have a better tone. Try not to let John influence you too much, maybe, but who knows? Very in the middle. Very in the middle. 55, you see. Knows 45. Well, just a minute. Let's ask Ellis to tell us what she's angling for this week. Let's have a look at this. 
Now, Richard, I apologise now, but I know absolutely nothing about fishing. No. So can you tell me, what type of rod are you going to be yeah, using? Yeah, they're 12-foot carbons. They've got one and three-quarter test curve. I'm using 10-pound line with a two-ounce lead. Great. Well, your target's waiting for you out there 100 yes. yards away. Now, that's roughly the length of a football pitch, to give you some idea. So it's a bit of a long way. Now, Richard, tell me, how high are you actually going to have to cast your line to reach the target? Within the region of 25 to 30 yards high. Really? So I'm actually casting about 135 yards off my rear. Good. <laughs> now tell me, what are the weather conditions like for you today? A bit breezy. Oh, they... <laughs> yes. never mind. Jolly good luck. Okay, thank you. And we're about ready to cast off. There we are. Okay, now, good should thing. it all go good. wrong? I mean, well, I know well, 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 you're on a racing set, but if it does go wrong, what are you prepared to do, Joe? Oh, go through the formality. I'm mixed up with animals, so go through the yes. formality of it. And they're, I'm very squeamish and going for animals' private parts and that. They want me to milk a cow. No, 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 no there's no chance. I'm not, 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 not ending up down on the phone no, this, this is week. your form. This is what it you is. said you are prepared I've to do. I've got to milk a cow. You've made your point, all four of them. OK. So you'll just go back to your seat if you can find the way. Of course I can. Jilly good? Fine. Thank you, John McCreary. <laughs> and let's go back. Good luck, Richard. You've got six chances, so cast away. <whistles> mm. There we see John with his first cast. Oh, uh, he has six chances. Six. That was a little short. And to the left, there's Trevor winding in that rod and line. He's given him the other one, so he'll be ready to go with his second shot now. Or his second cast, rather. I must say the right words here. Never knew they did it on the head of it. You see, to think that's 130 yards of line. Oh, he's short Just again. She's short. Yeah, and that's Robert telling him he's short, which he probably knows. But you can see, if you look at the water this time, you see there is a lot of wind there by the look of it, which would make a lot of difference. And that is a long way. You pace out 100 and something yards. Two foot. Just two um, foot short two that time again, short. but still on the left of the target. You see the water moving there, pushing it from right to left. And it's like a golf ball. It's amazing how a golf ball can be affected by the wind like that. Yeah. He's getting the length now, but it's the wind's still pushing him to the left. Another cast. Where's this one gone? Yeah. Still. How many left has he got now? Just one left. So there we are. See, there's no time on this one. It's just six tries at getting it. It's amazing just how far he can get. Oh, bad luck. Bad luck indeed. Oh. Very bad luck indeed, but you know, 100 yards, was that asking a bit much on those conditions? Um, on them conditions, yes, but you know, if they've been reasonably calm... A calmer it day it would have been on. Yeah. yeah, I mean, even in practice, I can tell how difficult it is. Yes, it's a... You know, it's... When I've casted like 10 casts, I've only hit it once. Yes. Maybe we'll have another go another time, OK, okay yeah. on a calm day. OK. Yeah. Thank you very okay. much for Thank being you. here. Yeah. Off you go, then. Bad luck. Show. Great, great show. There we are. So you said yes, your racing certainty lets you down, just like one of your Ten horses. Ten on chance. Yes, you you're right. So you don't get anything and you've got to do a forfeit. You said it would be down as well, Bob, so you go down the drain as well, but... I'm, I'm never going to follow McCurrick again, ever. <laughs> no. <laughs> I never do. After tonight, I never will. <laughs> now then, Susie, you go into a great big lead now. You have another 45 points. You go into 188. Well done out there. <laughs> There. And 45 of you out there did very well indeed, so they will be converted into money later on in the show. And John, come here. We want to hear more about this forfeit because you were going and <laughs> ranting and raving there about.
animals and a <laughs> cow and all this sort of thing. Perhaps. So you're prepared to go onto a farm yeah. and milk a cow. I'm so not, not we could, not to we could to film that. that. Yeah, but, you know, right. sometimes, you know, if we think, you know, it's a possibility and it's something we could do in the studio... Oh, no. Let, let's no, not, not tonight, no. no. just a minute, just a minute. Let's see if we do... Yeah. No, 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 not tonight. Oh, no. Come along, oh, Primrose. I don't, I don't believe it. Now, that's Primrose. She's a lovely... She's a lovely thing. And that's Jean with Primrose. She's beautiful, isn't she? Yeah, lovely, yes. She is lovely. Yeah. She is very lovely. Come round here, John. That's it. Around what do back. I have to do, Bruce? That's it. Just, uh... Oh, no, I just can't, sit. I can't do you come on, you can sit down there. Oh. Thank you, Peter. That's it. And the bucket goes underneath. You have to try and get a good rhythm, OK? His tail's back, <laughs> Well, I'll keep it well out of the way. Now, what do I do? I grab it and push yeah, it down. Yeah, but, but not too hard. You get a rhythm going. Squeeze and pull down. Just one hand. Yes. Right. Okay. I got a bit. Yes, you did. By the way, oh. you, we're trying to get four pints. So thirsty, are you? Do you want to bet on it? <laughs> do you want to bet on it? She's lovely. Oh, she's kicking me. Yes. <laughs> Join us for part three, where we'll be shelling out and cooking with gas. Stay at your post. We want pork pie. 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 Pork back. Welcome back. And now it's time for the rap. Are you ready, rappers? Yeah. Oh, look, Neil's on the side. Would you come, come and do the rap I with me? me. Yeah, come here, come here. <laughs> come here, would you like to do the rap with me? On your own, OK, let's, let's try it, OK? Yeah. <laughs> right. Just you and me, right? Do you want to bet on it? Do you want to bet on it? No, no. I say, <laughs> I say that, you just do the you bet, you see? OK. <laughs> <laughs> I almost wish John was back. Right. <laughs> well, do you want to bet on it? You bet. You bet. Well, you better get on it. You bet. So don't fret. Get set. Are you ready? You bet. Great. How about it? <laughs> right. oh. he, couldn't, he couldn't wait to get off. He really pulled me off there. Right. Now, as you were probably aware, I had to do another forfeit last week. It, it was to be a dustman for a day. <laughs> All I can say is, it was quite long enough. Have a look at this. I'm getting married in the morning. <laughs> nice to see you, to see you. Get in the cab. There we are, a bit of fun. 
But if any of those, any of those lads uh, are watching, thank you for a very nice day. You gave us a nice time. Thank you very much for looking after us. Well, now, our next challenger is going to demonstrate for us the ultimate in fast food. Top chef Peter Bell can normally whip up an omelette in a couple of minutes. However, tonight, Peter says that he will make not just one, but 24 edible omelettes in just three minutes. I'd just like to add, the egg mixture is already prepared. There are eight omelette pans, and they will all be at the right temperature before he starts. That is the bet. 24 omelettes in the time it takes <coughs> to boil an egg. What do you think, Bob? Can I say before I say what I'm going to think <clears throat> that I've been known to wear the odd suit on the box with a matching tie and handkerchief? Yes. How immaculate you look, and do you think your tailor will give me a special rate? Well, isn't that nice? Doesn't it look nice? Nice. nice? I think it deserves a round of applause. Regarding the special rate, no chance. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bruce. I think you'll succeed. Not you, you. You're for him. You're yeah. for I'm Peter for Bell. Him. Absolutely right. The chef. Yes. Okay. OK, what about you now? You're in the lead there with 188. What are you going to do this time, I, Susan? I couldn't do one in an hour, but I'm going to say yes. You're going to go yes? OK, fine, that's good. Now, John, have you thoughts on this? Well, Brucey, I'll give you the name of my clothier at a fee. <laughs> Um, well, one I pair of your know. trousers make a whole suit for I me. It's an even Stephen chance, but you've got a face that looks like an egg, Brucey, so I'll say no. Yeah, you're going to go for a no. no. All right, John, that's your prerogative. Now, out there, what do you think? Now, remember, before you bet this time, remember, I'd like to remind you, you're not only betting for, the, for charity, you're betting for the fate of Forsyth in the form of a forfeit. So, if you're wrong, I'm right in it. So make your bet. I have to go with the majority, and it's the last bet of the night, so do have your final bet at home. Try and get back whatever you've lost, maybe. Now then, yes is 78. Only 70, only 22 no's. Well, I have to go with the majority, so if you 78 are right, then I don't have to do a forfeit, but if you're wrong, I'm right in it up to here. So now let's meet the master of the omelettes, Peter Bell. There we are. Peter, thank you for being with us. Thank you for being with us. That's it. And these are your assistants. These are my students. And, yes. and who are you? Donna Joyce. You're Donna Joyce. Yeah. I see. Did your mother want twins? <laughs> <laughs> Think about that one if you like. No second name until now. But actually, and you are Martin Simpson. Martin Simpson. Okay. Now come right in here, Peter, because I want to talk to you mainly. Um, this was your own idea to come along and do this. This is marvellous. No, it wasn't my idea. Oh. Donna's idea. Donna? Nothing to do yeah. with me. So you wrote to us and told us all about Peter and, that's right. and the, all his staff and his students that are coming along here. That's well, right. that's very nice of you. Thank you, because we rely on your ideas. Your ideas give us a show. Without your ideas, we haven't got a show. Well, that's lovely. Now, oh, by the way, I also understand that Donna's organised a sponsorship of £100 per omelette for a local charity for tonight. Whatever's going on, locally, where they live. This is mad. So well done again. All right. That's it. And it was, um, it was Donna Joyce. That's yes. right. Your mother wanted twins. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I said we'd give him a second chance, but he's gone there. OK. <laughs> well, now, Peter, if you and Donna and Martin will get behind there to the stove, I'm just going to find a lady here who does a bit of cooking. Is somebody here who does a bit of cooking? Here. You look nice. Yeah, come on, come here. She does cook, does she? She does cook. She does. Yeah, she does. She, she, she makes a great omelette. Fine. OK, jolly good. Is that your boyfriend? My husband. Oh, your husband. Oh, yeah. OK, fine. Well, he should know. Right. What's your name, by the way? Donella. Oh, Donna? Donella. Oh, Donella. Donella. Oh, oh uh, Donna? Donella's here. Yeah. <laughs> that was a little lack, wasn't it? <laughs> Donella what, dear? Maidment. Don, do, Donna... Donella Maidment. Don, Donella Maidment. <laughs> right. OK, sounds like a meal in itself. Right. <laughs> Now then, all I want you to do, Donella, is just as they go along the production line and they start coming out on the plates and all of Peter's students out there, nice big smiles, that's it. And these are the waiters here and our head waiter here. So all we want you to do is that when they come off the production line, they look as though they are cooked, you know. This is the French... Uh, baveuse omelette. Baveuse, baveuse, baveuse omelette. Uh, just a little bit runny, but nice. Because I don't like them, you know, thick and stodgy, do you? You know, like John. But OK. <laughs> So here we are. We all ready, Peter? I won't start until you are actually ready. You have three minutes, starting from now.
okay? Just as they pass by, have a little look. I think you'll agree they are, they are definitely cooked, and you're quite happy with them. Good. Ah. Oh. That's another. That's the first eight gone, and you have two minutes left. Right on time. You can do my cooking. You can do your cooking any time, Gabby. <laughs> A minute thirty left, Peter. A minute thirty. Are you satisfied with all those, Danella? They look fine. Though. You're quite happy? They do look quite edible, which is great. OK, we're getting down to the wire soon. A minute ten left. One minute left for the last eight. Come on, come on Peter, come on! Good I've never seen anything so quick in my life. Either. And the wonderful thing is they are really cooked. Right, they are same. really cooked. Come on! 30 seconds left. 30 seconds. How are we doing? All ready to be served. 25. 20. Yes, Mark. Thank you, Donella. And could we have the you bet Betsy? Wasn't it? <laughs> Ellis, absolutely marvellous. And we thank all your students. You look so lovely. And the waiters, uh, Donna and Martin there, if you'll just go off there. And thank you very much for being with us. And congratulations, Peter. Well done, indeed. Thank you. Off you go. Wonderful. There they all go. OK. Now let's see how we scored on this one. Well. Yes, you said, Bob, and you were right, another 70. So you go down to 158, but right into a commanding lead. Yes, <laughs> another 78 for you, Susie, which means you go to 266. Well done. And nothing for poor old John. Ah, <laughs> poor old John. There we are. And Brucey. And the cow, Bruce... and the cow as well. <laughs> <laughs> and the cow as well you got, yes. And Brucey doesn't have to do a forfeit. Well, now, audience, 78 of you did very well indeed, so we're going to convert that into money right now. So, 78 you got there. On the first one, you got 80, which was marvellous. Then you got a 63, then you got a 45, which means our audience total tonight is... 266. We're going to add this series another thousand pound to that. <laughs> Plus our winning celebrity over there, 266, which gives us a grand total tonight of 1532 pounds, which will go to your favourite charity. <laughs> now, <laughs> Susie. What charity is your favourite charity and where would you like it to be sent? I would like it to go to AIDS Research. Because AIDS, it, research. AIDS Research, it needs a lot right AIDS now. AIDS yeah. Research, that's a wonderful cause. Thank you so much. That's lovely. <laughs> Absolutely lovely. Thank you again. And, uh, well... That's all for this week. I'd like to thank everybody, and I do mean everybody, especially my guests, Bob Holness, Susie Quattro, John McCreerick, and my hundred buttoneers out there who did so well for charity, not forgetting all our magnificent challengers. We'll see you next week. Do you want to bet on it? Yes! Where do you bet again on it? Yes! I'll clear off.